the best art is perverse. So it has a double and sometimes more entendres that bring us in a very, very um, unstable position. My name is uh, Philippe Pirot. I'm from Belgium originally. I work in Germany, in Frankfurt at the moment, where I run a school, an art school, and a Kunsthalle uh, called Porticus. Um, and I'm adjunct senior curator at the BAM PFA. Um, in fact, for years I've been very interested in the relationship between image making and violence. So there is a, a long uh, Western art history obsessed with uh, violence. And and not only the depiction of violence, but also like the suggestion of violence outside of the picture. And then I encountered this book by Stephen Eisenman, The Abu Ghraib Effect, and he traces in fact this um, history from uh, religious and mythological imagery in Western art up till in fact today, uh, when those uh, Abu Ghraib torture pictures were publicized in 2004. And that was the, probably the in, initial impetus for this show. What A.B. Warburg called the pathos formula, it's a set of gestures that has been developed in, have been developed in the iconography of ancient European art from, let's say, the post-Roman, early Christian up till, let's say, the 19th century. And it's a language of impassionate gestures. Um, and it can go in many di different directions. It can go from ecstasy to suffering to uh, being extremely happy. Very typical for the Pathos formula is this kind of double-sidedness to it. That it's on the one hand, it's despair. It's about pain, but it's also a transformative thing. It's ecstatic for those saints because receiving the stigmata brings them closer to God in a certain kind of interpretation, in a Christian interpretation. Um, but for the show, what was important is to trace that on the one hand, but also uh, find those moments where that breaks down into something else. And so the show tries to make an arc from the tortured body as uh, a transformative um, ID. Um, that's the whole idea of the passion of the Christ. And at a certain moment, and it's not coincidental that it's mostly related to the period of enlightenment, uh, some artists start to look at torture as sheer pain and not some transcendental kind of exercise. Yeah, maybe it's interesting to indeed start with uh, contemporary artist Fernando Botero, who reacted against the pictures uh, that appeared in 2004 of the tortures at Abu Ghraib. He paints, or in this case it's mostly drawings, these bodies with the reminiscence of the pathos formula. And he kind of at the same time, he engages with the documentary uh, photographs that the soldiers made and this very long Western art history. And that's the thesis also of Stephen Eisenman's book, um, that in fact this pathos formula continued to live. And, and I think Botero brings this in a very, very perverse way back together. The, the seminal set of work for this show, I think, is the Disasters of War by Francisco de Goya, Spanish uh, 18th century painter, mostly. Uh, in this case, we show etchings. And it's a whole series where he very clearly um, represents pain and killing and killing fields as something that has no premise whatsoever. Um, it's, it's very, very um, non-transcendental and, and his captions are so uh, sarcastically ironic to kind of like uh, stress this whole idea of the incomprehensibility of war. It's kind of like when you see Goya, you see already the Abu Ghraib photographs. And what is very important with this pathos formula in relation to torture is that it was, it often generates pictures with a, a, a subtext or a tone of the erotic. And that's what probably the critical point that Goya introduced is that it's not erotic anymore. And there is a very interesting point, I think, for the, an important point for the show is this 
how desirable are these images? How much do they create a relationship of desire with the viewer? One of the subtitles of the show uses the word truth. And there is this perverse kind of like, uh, also movement between torture that was meant to get the truth out of some person, till in fact the documentary image of war, which is in, in fact starting with Jacques Callot and with Goya, like to show this is what war is really like. And I think that's today extremely problematized. How do we convey truth? And I think the show is very relevant uh, in order to look at those type of strategies that happened in um, earlier times. Um, and I think the viewers, they will be sometimes maybe a little bit shocked or they would think it might be a very dark show. But I think the most important is that people cannot stay neutral to them. And in that sense, I think, I hope this, this show brings about images that kind of like uh, polemize our position and also our moral compass.